Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and thank you for joining us for another daily video. Today we're talking about adhesives in particular, mainly for those of you who are kind of DIYers or if you need a quick fix because you're running out the door or something like that. So come join us and check it out. So I know for a number of you, this is kind of out of your league, kind of too advanced, but there's a number of you out there who are kind of avid and shoe enthusiasts. There are a number of you who are kind of DIYers and everything. And then some of you kind of are running out of the door and realize, oh shoot, I got this wrong with my shoes. Well, something can be quickly fixed temporarily. I do highly advise that basically any form of major repairs or even just glue jobs are done by your local professional cobbler or especially somebody that understands how to work with leather just because there are additional steps usually it's not just something where you just slap on some glue and stick it together and you're good to go there are additional steps definitely you have to do as far as preparation uh, curing times and even trimming out and so on sometimes it takes a combination of different adhesives as well but in today's video i'm going to talk about a few very simple ones that you can do yourself at home that can be a quick fix or even a temporary fix you know just to be able to get by long enough until you're able to get those shoes to your local professional now there are a number of types of adhesives this first thing that we're going to cover. Most recommended adhesives that we all recommend as far as cobbler industry, leather industry goes, you know, shoemakers, bootmakers, we all use this uh, particular one. It comes in different brands and types, I guess you can call it, uh, is a contact cement or an all-purpose cement, basically. My glue pot that a number of you may have seen, this one right here, um, this is a contact cement. It's this gallon right here of Jet Set All Time. That's what we typically use in the back, but it doesn't come in a small container for something that you are able to purchase yourself, kind of over-the-counter type of thing, and purchasing a gallon, I don't think you're going to be using a whole gallon. They even sell them in buckets and big old drums from what I understand too. I haven't seen the drums in person yet, but uh, that's gonna be kind of interesting. I've, I've, I've had the buckets a few times, but it's just easier to pour the gallon size one. So I got a work system out for that. Anyways, off topic there. But ones that you can purchase over the counter that are a little bit easier to find. Uh, some of you may know of barge rubber cement. It comes in a little tube, but unfortunately I, I scoured my entire shop and turns out I don't have a single tube, not even in my retail area. I don't know why, but I'll, I'll show you a picture real quick of what it looks like. So that's the barge cement there. That's fairly readily available. Um, you can find it online. You can find it at a local cobbler shop. Unfortunately, not at our store as of the time of this recording because apparently I'm out of it or maybe it's still boxed away after I move and I didn't realize we didn't unpack it or something. We have a few boxes up there that still haven't been unpacked. Um, another one that's uh, sometimes available is this Masters right here as well. Works phenomenally, has a little applicator brush and it comes in a few different sizes and it keeps going up bigger and bigger all the way up to gallon sizes. I'm not sure if they do, you know, buckets, but you're not gonna need buckets of it. Um, personally, I prefer the Barge over the Masters. They are both toluene based, so that means that's a solvent in there to keep it, you know, liquefied in other words. Uh, toluene is a little bit of a stronger agent, so in most cases actually beneficial because if you're needing to glue something, you need some form of solvent to basically break through the previous adhesive at least somehow, or any kind of, you know, sweats or moistures, which we'll talk about here in just a second on a pair of shoes where the insole is unglued like this one here. Uh, the next one is uh, Renya. This one is uh, the five star by Renya and this one's just uh, Renya Cola de Cologne here. And these are uh, both great contact cements. They are toluene free. They use acetone instead. Acetone, why that's better is mainly because it's, it's not as strong or as harsh of a chemical so anybody has a little bit more 
delicate skin in other words um, this may be a little better it's less toxic as well which is nice price point it's definitely gonna be higher on the Renya I mean we get it in the gallon if you saw my little container that's white back there with the little blue cap on it that sits there sideways this is what I use in that and I use it for very specific types of materials combinations of materials um, combinations of other adhesives and primers and things like that so you know it might not work as well the problem is also storing this is a tiny bit harder with this acetone acetone has a tendency to evaporate quicker than toluene does so um, you know if you're planning to store it and you're perfectly fine with uh, with toluene go for either masters or the barge cement again the barge is my personal preference and toluene based ones um, but it comes in a tube or I think the next size up is like a quart size, I believe off the top of my head, I can't remember for sure. Um, but if you want something easier applicating, the Masters has a little, little brush on the inside. Ooh, it's a little gloopy there. You need to add some more toluene to kind of, you know, dilute it a little bit, in other words. Another one that everyone's very familiar with, and it's, I hate this stuff, Shugu. I mean, it's it's great, but I hate it at the same time. Shugu is not an adhesive, okay? Please do not think that this is a proper adhesive. It works great for a temporary quick fix because it dries a lot faster than any of these cures, a lot quicker, um, and it works great as a filler as well. So say you have like a, you know, kind of a hole, it mainly works on athletic footwear best. It just bonds to that material best of all, and it's clear or black, so you get a color, color option in other words in that one um, so the problem is that again it doesn't cure the same way as these ones do so it doesn't become as strong ever and uh, you know there's still high potential that it's going to come apart use it strictly as last minute you need to do a quick filler somewhere um, if you're going for a jog or whatever because it does cure at least somewhat quick I'm talking about maybe 30 minutes to an hour type of quick versus these ones you want let's say cure for like overnight about 12 hours roughly they'll stick at about 10 minutes 10 15 minute period but curing time ideally is about 12 hours uh, sometimes you can push eight hours as well this one however um, typically is kind of considered to be cured at about 30 minutes to an hour um, but again well it looks like they even say on here three to four hours uh, allow repair to cure for 24 hours even so actually in reality this one takes even longer so completely up to you works great as a filler I mean if you're missing a chunk out of your tennis shoes I guess you give it a 24-hour period at least but I don't like the stuff for anything as far as actual repairs, gluing things down, sticking keels together, so on. I don't like it. It doesn't work. It gets in the way for us cobblers down the road because it gets all gummy when we have to remove it. It's it's a horrible nightmare. But anyways, we'll continue. Now the other adhesive that I recommend, but be very cautious about it, and obviously it's something you want to be a little more familiarized with in other words is super glues there are a number of different variants out there the ones that you can get at, uh, you know local hardware store or grocery store there are a lot of them out there we typically use these ones here there's one from money's work best actually three different ones they they're different because they have just different consistencies one's very thin the other one's kind of a middle medium and the other one's very thick and kind of you know easier to use as a certain type of filler or a combination of uh, adhesives and you know materials kind of fill something in sometimes uh this one here the peg effects uh, peg flex this one's uh kind of on the thicker side but it's a little more flexible cost wise it's kind of pricey but you're not really going to be able to find them just over the counter that easily um it's almost a special order in other words just about anywhere you go and then these ones are the ones that we use most commonly there's the thicker one is the purple one and the super thin one is the blue one as well so we use some of these sometimes in combination with the contact cements just depends on the type of material it is uh, so again it's it's one of those things that you have to be very cautious with now it, because you're not going to be able to get a hold of these all that easily or maybe even some of these just just don't go for anything like Gorilla Glue or Crazy Glue. That stuff is a nightmare for cobblers. That stuff is a fire hazard for us. That stuff is just horrible all around for cobblers to deal with. If you put Gorilla Glue, Crazy Glue on your shoes, 
we're gonna have to charge you more just to remove the old glues and then on top of that the job that needs to be done as well so keep that in mind do not use gorilla glue or crazy glue whatever you do reason why i say crazy glue and even gorilla glue is because we've had fire department you know get after us a few times about it fact is that when you start sanding it the small fibers from gorilla glue and crazy glue actually clog up our fireproof bags on our machines yes we have fireproof dust collecting bags that dust is extremely flammable i mean you take a little bit of a fire to it and the whole thing just starts going and it goes for a while i mean it's it's probably one of the best fire starters out there, quite honestly. I've had a few cobblers tell me where they had a spark start of fire in their machine. They dumped everything out into the dumpster out back and it was smoldering for a few days. Okay, so, and these guys live out in Florida where it's humid. Out here in Colorado, it's dry, so it's even worse. But uh, anyways, again, do not use Gorilla Glue. Do not use Crazy Glue. They, they are very hazardous overall. Use super glue, you find those little small tubes of super glue. We have a dollar store right next to us here. They got the little ones here that are like, a, I think like 0.1 ounce or something like that, just little tubes. Those work great. They are not a fire hazard. They don't clog up our machines or anything like that. And I mean, typically they're, they're a little extra pain for us sometimes if you kind of overdo it with it, but it's gonna get the, get the job done at least temporarily for you until you get it all properly fixed. So those are the main adhesives I will ever recommend if you need like an emergency kit for your shoes or something or just somewhere in, in your closet. Have a contact cement of some sort. Uh, Shugu, again, for your kind of more athletic, outdoorsy type of footwear. Not for your nice dress shoes. I don't recommend it on that. Um, it's very thick, so trying to glue down an insole, for example, is just a little too thick. And some super glue, some, some of those little small tubes. They're kind of a one-time use sometimes as well. They work very well. That's kind of your draw, that's your limit. I'm not really gonna tell you about the combination of primers, you know, using these together and stuff like that. It's way too complicating. It's 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 a full-blown, I'm gonna to have to teach you how to be a cobbler. And I'm basically already teaching you how to be a cobbler with a number of my videos. I get comments all the time down below saying, I'm not here to watch how to become a cobbler or something. I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm just showing how it goes and stuff, but, uh, Anyways, I hope everyone's enjoying them as is. So for those of you who are always wondering, I see these comments in all the groups and forums. Everyone's asking, hey, uh, this is coming undone. This is coming undone. What kind of glue do I use? These are the glues I recommend. These are the glues that we use all the time. Again, I don't use this one often just because we have Jet Set instead. Shugu I don't use. These ones I use. Uh, Renya I use. Uh, Jet Set obviously up here I use. I do have a few different masters that I use back there. They're very specific uh, uses and purposes that I have to use them for, but uh, that's kind of much more advanced, much, much more advanced in other words. So, you know, barge cement, again, that's the only one I'm missing on the table. That one's phenomenal as well. But let's go ahead and dive in and see what kind of options we may be able to do real quick as far as being able to do small repairs at home or when you're running out the door type of thing and, and all that. So let's dive into it. So first one we're gonna do is kind of a common one, but at the same time, a lot of people actually miss it just because it's inside the shoe. They don't notice your insoles when they come unglued. This one I pulled up, obviously. Uh, it's still glued down at the inside of the shoe here fairly well, but some shoes, they have a three quarter length insole, meaning the insole starts from here and goes to the back. Some of the Western boots just have a heel cap, so it just goes on the back of the heel and those move around a lot after some sweat, moisture and heat uh, coming off your feet, you're, you're going to deactivate those adhesives obviously. And then full length insoles are, are very tricky in other words, but I, I'll still show you kind of how. So might as well just go ahead and, oh, this is a three quarter length actually. I swear I felt that. But a, three, but a full length one is a little more tricky, so you're gonna have to kind of work at it. Otherwise, again, I highly recommend you take it to your local cobbler. They will be able to take care of it much better because we have all the tools to be able to really reach down in there into the toe areas. We have the lasts, we have basically everything that you need. And then we'll, able, we'll be able to take a look at these and see if they may be needing to be replaced. This one, still in fairly good shape actually, surprisingly. These are those two boot New Yorks we've been working on little by little. But um, the three-quarter length and the heel ones are very easy to take care of. The ones at the toe, those are a little tricky. So, you know, 
just kind of uh, at your own discretion type of thing, whether you want to test it out and get glue all over your hands, or if you just want the professionals to take care of it and set those shoes aside um, and wear something else for that evening. But anyways, if you're gonna be doing this, this is soft. So when you think about it, super glues dry hard. They don't dry flexible. The Pega Flex here is the one that's the most flexible out of all the super glues, but it's still hard. So you can't really use a super glue on this. And again, for a temporary fix, you're gonna use a contact cement. I'm gonna go ahead and use my jet set here real quick. And I start out in the middle and get glue all over my, my table here. But I'm just gonna kinda get it in the center. You don't necessarily have to get the very, very edges at least on the back end and then at the front if it's a three-quarter length right up front here those you do want to glue the edges down quite a bit all those edges right here you want to get all that down because that's going to kind of fold up and hit you in the foot funny but on the back end right here you don't have to get all the way to the edges maybe leave about anywhere between a quarter to an eighth of an inch before getting all the way there so that there's some way that it can be pulled up and removed afterwards uh, also and this is why i like the masters or anything that has a brush it's a little bit easier to get in there for us again we're using containers like this we're going to basically get a little bit of glue on the same exact spots here it's a little hard to hard to see hope my hat's not in the way i should probably take it off for you guys while i'm doing this actually oh no there goes my hat but when i get down you can you can end up seeing the line where that insole had stopped on the inside possibly there camera might not catch it but if you see it in person you'll be able to see the line there and throw my hat back on i got bad hair day today got a haircut finally but it's still a bad hair day for me so while it's still wet you want to try to stick it in as quickly as you can oh show you a quick trick actually before i press it down fold it in half like that there Fold it in half, get it in there again quickly while it's still at least somewhat damp. And your first place that you're going to press down is on the back end of the heel right here. Very first place. Because that's going to indicate if you push that insole too far back or if you see a bit too much of a gap there from the insole to the heel counter back here or the, or the heel itself then you can adjust it while it's still damp. You're gonna press that down, make sure everything's all lined up on the inside, and then just apply pressure. Again, this is a contact cement, so you don't really need something crazy to hammer out. This is just, again, a temporary fix. This is not one of those fixes that you're gonna be able to have permanently. Um, you know, there's nothing you can really do about it. Again, uh, when we're working on them, we can still glue them in this way, but we have a last at the very least. We can put it on there and hammer it out very thoroughly and make sure that it really binds nicely. But in some cases, this will actually hold up fairly well too, surprisingly. So that's just one of the fixes that I want to show there with the contact cement on the insole area. You could do the same thing if you have like certain areas around the heel or somewhere else on the inside. Uh, you just touch it up just ever so slightly. Uh, you know, the insole we recommend doing wet just because again, when you start putting that insole in there, it's very hard to mess with as far as you know, trying to get everything to line up. So while it's still wet, it's easier to shift things around, take it out real quickly and readjust. That's what we recommend. Any other parts that you don't need to adjust to that kind of extent, I highly recommend just kind of leaving it to cure both sides. Well, not cure, but at least dry for a little bit. And then you're gonna apply some heat, which we're gonna do with these pair of Allen Edmonds. These are gonna be resold, but I decided since they're gonna be resold, why not use them as a quick sample of fixing the heel. So let me readjust everything and then start up on these ones for you. So we've got these uh, Allen Edmonds here where again, I had to pull up the heel just a little bit to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. It's that little top lift. This is what's called the top lift, just that rubber piece right there. It's coming up 
and sometimes that happens where it just comes up on one edge or a corner uh, sometimes you end up losing the whole thing now nine out of ten times if you end up losing the whole thing or even if it starts coming up usually that means that they need to be replaced that's majority of the time what happens other times it could have been something like you left on a car and it you know, the adhesive got deactivated or something, or you caught a corner or who knows what basically. But if you have at least just a corner sticking up like that, there, here's a couple of fixes. Also, technically, if you lost the heel, like it fell off and you still have it at least, you can te technically fix it temporarily. And again, I can't stress this enough. This one here is very much temporary. Get those heels replaced properly. Don't be trying to mess around with them or anything like that. But Envision, for example, if the heel had come off completely, you have to sand out the old glues. You got to make sure that everything's leveled out and, you know, get everything trimmed out properly because that heel's just not going to line up perfect on there. It's going to leave little corners that there's a high potential for it getting caught again. So it's, it's a mess if it just you know if it came off but if it's uh, come up just like that it's a little bit easier and there's a few different ways where you can use the super glue or the contact cement if the heel came off completely you can only use the contact cement because with the super glue you're going to have to use a press of some sort and most everyone doesn't have a press at their house even some cobblers are so old school still that they don't even have presses in their own shops but one that we're going to do and i'll use the masters this time actually before i open it i got Gotta sand it out. Very important, try to sand it out, rough it up a little more inside here. Uh, grab some sandpaper, anywhere between about uh, 80 grit to maybe a 120 on the highest. I'm using a 120 here just because it's, it's gonna be a little bit easier to kind of get it in there. But your goal is to try to remove some of the old glue and rough everything up. Now, obviously you won't be able to remove all the old glue like you would on the machine, because the machine's gonna definitely gonna do a better job of it. And usually our new heels don't even have glue on them yet. We have to sand them, so just saying. Okay, may have little edges of glue that are coming up a little bit, just pull them on off. And then your glues, if they're in a bottle or jar like that, shake them up well before using. Yeah, this one's extremely thick. That's one of the other key differences between a number of, of adhesives is, uh, you know, consistency of it. Sometimes uh, with masters, I've noticed my, my dad used them years ago. Um, and the problem was that consistency of how thick it was wasn't, wasn't always accurate. But anyways, you're going to go ahead and get, get it inside here right at the heel. Yes, and it's messy. You're gonna get some on your hands. Okay, you're gonna squeeze it down just to squeeze out some of the excess amounts of glue. So as you can see right here, I'm squeezing it out and it's just pushing out all that excess because you don't wanna to have too much. And keep in mind, we are not gluing it yet. We're just trying to remove some of the excess, grab a dirty towel or something you don't really care about to wipe it up maybe, and not a paper towel though. And then leave it open a little bit like that right there for about 10 to 15 minutes. You're gonna leave it open so that the adhesive's kind of not dry, but it allows the turpentines or acetones to evaporate because the solvents aren't gonna let it uh, let it adhere properly. It's just gonna kind of deactivate itself again. So you're not gonna be able to glue it immediately. Again, because this is a softer material on the inside with those leather insoles, it is gonna dry and cure fairly quickly and it's all flexible where this here, you wanna let it sit for just a little bit open because it's not as breathable. It's a rubber on rubber. Allen Edmonds, they tend to use uh, the fiberboard material and then they use a composite material and then finally the top lift. So there's not much room for the solvents to evaporate. So definitely wanna let it sit there and air dry for a little bit. Now I did the same thing on the other shoe on the mate here. And I'm gonna show kind of a quicker version with the super glue. This is strictly if you're running out the door and you, you have nothing else to wear or this was like the, the shoes you were planning to wear regardless for an event or something like that. So 
I don't recommend it unless it's for that particular reason. Now the super glue, obviously there's nothing that needs to be done, no shaking. Um, you know, sand it just a little bit. Get in there with sandpaper and do the same thing. Try to get some of that old factory glue out or cobbler glue or whatever kind of glue it is that's in there. Get it on out. And then just put it down towards the center back area of wherever the damage is. Because what's gonna happen is as soon as you press down, that super glue is gonna start squeezing out all the small crevices. So you can see it on the inside there, it's leaking out already. So oops. that's why you grab your towel, hold it down, wipe it, and wipe it. And then if it's on the corner again or wherever it may be, you need to apply pressure. Since it's on the corner, I'm gonna apply pressure on the edge of this table. And you gotta count out 30 Mississippis. You ready? No, I'm kidding. That's about 15 seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so just wipe off just a little bit more. Double check, look at that. It is all on there. Now, some shoes like Allen Edmonds as well, the heel block, same story. If the heel block right there is trying to crack open, same story, you'd have to use a little bit of the same methods that I'm doing with the top lift. This one's cracking. I'm not going to do these ones, unfortunately, just because again, I have to recraft these later on, but um, I'm gonna be doing some JR soles on these, but it's the same exact story, right where that crack is, right there with the heel block. Same story as what we're doing here. You're either gonna use your contact cement or you're gonna use your super glue and do it those methods. But uh, the contact cement, I'm gonna let these ones sit for just a little while longer and I'll be back in just a little bit to show you our next step on that one. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes basically. And uh, at this point, I recommend grabbing a heat gun. Uh, blow dryer will work or hair dryer, I mean. Um, but a heat gun is ideal just because it does get a little bit hotter. A little extra heat is better for the harder parts of the shoe, like the soles, the heels, uh, those parts. Anything softer, like the insoles, for example, any areas up here, you don't really need that. I don't recommend it. So um, I highly recommend doing a heat gun on anything along the lines of the heels or the soles just because it's a harder material. Uh, the other thing is that it's going to help heat up that material so it's a little easier, more pliable, so easy to bend and kind of press together. And heat also activates contact cement at its peak, in other words, because again, it's uh, it's open to dry to let the turpentines or not turpentines, the solvents, uh, whether it's acetone or atoline to evaporate. Now it's kind of lost its tackiness. So when you stick it together, it doesn't really quite stick, but heat will reactivate it and you're able to stick it together nicely and it's gonna have a really good bond. So let me heat this one up real quick. Again, it's not much that you have to do. Just apply some, some pressure with your fingers. Use the corner of the table a little bit and press down. At that point, because you just activated the adhesive, it also kind of at the same time deactivates and makes it soft and pliable again. So if you have any small edges somewhere of some glue, just take your finger and kind of rub it. Don't rub it up and down, you know, going against what you just glued. Just go side to side of whatever you just glued, basically. Now, let it cure. Uh, again, 8, 10, 12 hours is kind of ideal to let it cure. But if you need to wear it a little bit sooner, at least give them a couple of hours. Um, and you'll be okay, I guess you can say. So that's the contact cement method. Again, same thing can be done with a number of things with the heel bases, um, soles. You can technically do it if they're just a molded style sole or, you know, just, I don't, I don't recommend doing it. But again, if it's just molded, if it's just glued on, you can do that as a temporary fix. 
If you're wanting something a little more long-term, you might either need those shoes resold or get it done properly by a professional again. So as you can tell, like if you're one, something quicker, this one is great. Now the drawbacks of quicker is better type of thing. It's not always better. Again, like I had mentioned, contact cement has some form of flexibility, has a little more, you know, it's a little softer in other words. So when you're walking, what happens is that contact cement is gonna bend, it's gonna take impact a little better because when you're taking a step, you do have minor shock going through the shoe in other words. Might not seem like much, but you'd be surprised. And you know, super glue, it dries hard again. So it has a tendency to crack, so it's going to kind of you know, give out a little bit quicker than a contact cement would. Contact cement, because it's so flexible, it's gonna be able to take on that impact, it's gonna bend, it's gonna flex. That's why we use it on a number of shoes when we're recrafting and everything. It, it's ideal for that. The only thing is you gotta be a little more patient with it. Now, you know, what you need for your arsenal of shoe care products, that's up to you. Again, I recommend at least having, you know, the contact cement and a small thing of super glue, at least those little dollar store ones or wherever you end up buying it, hardware store or something. Just the little ones, that's plenty, plenty good. Don't bother trying to get fancy. All this is, you know, uh, welding glue or plumber's glue. Do not use plumber's glue. Do not, I missed that one. Don't use it. It's uh, it's not the fact that it's a fire hazard for us or anything like that. It is a nightmare. That stuff is horrible. I've had people bring in shoes that they fix with plumber's glue. I had to turn them down. I was not about to clog up my machine wheels because the stuff ends up like, I, I don't even know how to explain it. It becomes like glue again and just gets into the machines and just, it's nasty. And then the welder stuff too. I, the welder glue or spot weld or whatever it's called i can't remember it's designed to hold metal together or whatever else don't use anything other than these don't please you do i'm gonna have to give you a heads up i'm either gonna turn you down completely or i'm gonna have to charge you a buttload more basically and so is every other cobbler in the state a cobbler that's gonna take it in and say oh yeah no problem they charge you basically minimal that cobbler is probably using the same exact stuff and <laughs> it just cleans it up a little better maybe um, but <laughs> I, I doubt i doubt the cobblers are going to be using that but i just don't i just don't recommend it seriously stay away from anything other than things that i have recommended for you today in other words on those now same rules apply i've got this this one here that's got that little toe scuff right there at the toe and same exact rules apply. It really comes down to which direction you need to take it. If you have some kind of like leather peeling here on the sides, obviously those are bendable areas right here. So you want something a little more flexible in other words, and something that will hold up against that kind of impact as well. So you'd use a contact cement on the toe area and the heel counters back here and stuff it's a little bit harder because there's some reinforcement and doesn't tend to flex and bend you can get away with the super glue now again bear in mind super glue dries hard so if you have a tendency to accidentally kick things whether it's a door or you know your spouse in the butt or something like that if they're a you know bodybuilder with uh buns of steel you're gonna crack that plastic you know well not plastic but super glue in other words and uh yeah, and uh, you better start running. You hope your shoes don't fall apart from your spouse if they got buns of steel like that. Man. <laughs> but uh, anyways, you know, it's completely up to you as far as this area here. Uh, you know, like I'll be able to just show you because we're going to be redoing this area here anyways. Again, I'll do the quicker one, the super glue. You know, just, just a small amount. And again, your fingers are going to get dirty. That's why my hands are always dirty and everything. And, you know, that all cobbler's hands, put just a tiny amount right there at the very, very tip. Super glue activates under pressure, so it's not something where you just kind of like lay it down. You actually have to kind of push it over and work its way in, and then just hold it there for a few seconds, in other words. So, because this is a thinner spot, not like the top lift there, we don't have to do a full 20 seconds. Uh, anywhere between five to 10 seconds is plenty good. And then you're able to, you know, do whatever else you need to, whether you're doing a filler with the Saphir Renovating Repair Cream um, and then sanding it or something. But at least for a quick fix, 
this will this will do the job and put a little bit of wax and polish uh, on there, cream polish. But otherwise, if you have a little extra time, go ahead and grab your Saphir Renovating Repair Cream and then kind of fill in that and just work it in and then finally sand it out smooth and then go through the process of polishing basically like we did with, uh, oops, did with these ones here with the Two Boot New Yorks. But that's what I recommend. If you're using the contact cement, you put just a little bit on there, press it down because it's a thin area and there's, uh, you know, there's a way for the solvents to evaporate. You don't have to keep it open and use a heat gun or anything. Um, just, just kind of press it down let it sit there for a good while. Um, I would recommend giving it at least, you know, that eight hour period. Well, because it's thin, you can probably get away with about six hours at that point um, because it's so thin here with the contact cement, so you should have all the turpentine gone. Then go through your process of, you know, cleaning, conditioning, and polishing. And I only say that just because a number of cleaning agents and certain polishes like the Pomodoro cream, for example, it's got a solvent in here. It's a different solvent, but it's solvent nonetheless. So, you know, just uh, just be a little more on the cautious side on that area and, and work at it gently on that. So that's what I recommend for those. So again, there are a number of different things that can be done as far as like just glue down, but all these options are very temporary. I don't really advise doing much else. Uh, the one that we didn't really cover too much of is the Shugu. It doesn't really work on any kind of dress shoes too well. It doesn't work on, you know, casual shoes. Your athletic shoes, um, you're kind of, you know, just, you know, Jordans, for example, or, you know, a hiking or running shoe might work a little bit better. There's a lot of other uses that I've heard of about this. I had one guy that used to come in like every month and buy a couple of packs of the larger ones. These are the small ones. And he used it for his guitar. I don't know what he did on his guitar exactly, but he was always using it for his guitar. So, hey, if it works, it works. I mean, uh, who am I to judge, basically? I mean, from my experience as a cobbler that I've been doing my entire life, not the best stuff ever. Easy to work with, very easy, but not the best if you're planning long-term purposes, in other words. So, stay away from the Shugu in that case. But it doesn't hurt to have a little bit in your emergency case just in case, maybe if you, if you have running shoes or hiking shoes, and you can do a little bit of work on that. Again, it adheres very well to those materials where some of these just, they either have a chemical reaction. I know super glue has certain chemical reactions with some rubbers where it will heat up like crazy, it will smoke up, and it has a horrible smell. It burns out all your nose hairs out, basically. It's, oh, it, chopping onions is nothing compared to this stuff when it has that chemical reaction with nylon type materials just the thought of it and i have to deal with that like every day because we we sometimes have to use it in those cases and then contact cement uh, it just ha it'll have a much better bond than than the shugu for sure only downside is most of them have a yellow tint to them so if you're putting on something white you can have a little bit of a yellow tint where super glue is clear those are the plus and minuses. Now the uh, Renya, the Cola de Cologne is typically clear. Um, well, at least a little more clear. It's got a little bit of a yellow tint to it. Don't know if you guys can see it in there, but uh, once it dries, it's a lot more clear than the Barge, the Masters, and uh, the Jet Set. And let's double check this one. I thought this one was clear. Oh, this one hasn't even been opened yet. This one, same story. Let's see if I can same story as the Cola de Cologne from Renya. It uh, it tends to dry a little bit more on the clear side. That's why there's a few Masters uh, cements that I use that are actually completely clear. But uh, the more clear and more transparent you go, the less bond strength it has. So that's, uh, that's the downside of using clear, unfortunately. And it costs a lot more, like a lot more. So, you know, not always a practical product to use using the clear one so just thought i'd mention that for those of you who are familiar with glues some of you cobblers as well that may be watching actually there's a handful of you cobblers it turns out so thanks for watching i hope you guys have been enjoying it but anyways everyone who's watching if you're an enthusiast if you're new to the shoe game new sh shoe industry um, if you're a brand new cobbler if you're an experienced cobbler all of you, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've all enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Send us a message. All of our contact information is on our website, cobblersplus.com. We are currently in the process of working on redoing our website. I'm hoping that I have this thing activated 
this week where you could actually go in and see price details, uh, purchase products, purchase services and things like that. So kind of keep an eye out for that. Um, it will have all of Marcus's information on there, Jason's information on there, uh, you know, just showing all the products and everything. And obviously there's so many different variants of repairs and recrafting and uh, even products out there that we can't list everything all at once. We're kind of having to get this website up and running and kind of every week we'll add a few additional products. In other words, if you're on our website, once this is all activated, currently if you go to cobblersplus.com, it's just informational, but as soon as it's active on the new system, it'll have options to actually purchase products. If you don't see any of the products or services listed, there will be a section where you can actually fill out a form for services, or if you don't see a product listed, shoot us a message and uh, we'll let you know what we can do for you, either send you an invoice or we'll be able to post it fairly quick at that point, in other words, for you. So again, thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're subscribed or if you're not, hit that notification bell icon so you're notified when we have our next video out. I'm still working on the daily video posts, a lot of technical difficulties using a laptop. So these videos uh, take up a lot of space. So definitely take a lot of time to process everything and get it uploaded, even just the upload time. So bear with me, but for the time being, hopefully all the information and content I've been posting is very enjoyable for you, very informative. And again, as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.